Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate land website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today is really special. I got the busiest guy in land today. Full-time firefighter, land coach, extraordinaire, and phenomenal land investor from Havro, Massachusetts. I'm not even going to pretend to do the bastard accent. Jeff Axton is with us. Jeff, how are you? Great. How you doing, Mark? Thank you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. And uh, I know you've been crazy busy with all your stuff. So let's just get right into it. What's been going on with you? How are you doing, man? Uh, oh, I'm doing great. I uh, I just got back from a little vacation. I was out in uh, Winnipesaukee, up in that area. And then, uh, and then we drove up to Bath, Maine and Popham Beach. It's beautiful up there. And in the meantime, my business is just um, piled on to each other. I, I just have so much on my plate. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, you know, it's it's been the summer of Jeff, by the way, because you came oh. you came out to Vegas. You had, yeah. you had you had. I mean, every time we do like the mastermind, Jeff is like on vacation. So when you guys went to like Utah. What, like, where else did you guys go all summer? Yeah, we went to let's see, we went to Vegas, Utah, Winnipesaukee, uh, Maine, and. You know stuff around here. That that's that's about. We went to uh, Florida early this year, so right. just and, all and, over the place. And the land notes are paying for all this. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, my my land business pays for any vacation, the hotel, everything. You know, because it's you know I'm looking at land up there too, or wherever I go. So right, right. That's great. And definitely so, uh, use that. So okay. So what's going on with you deal wise? I know you've been crazy well, busy. Yeah, I, I have. Um, well, I have a, a bunch of people that I, I have uh, contracts with that have a lot of land, and so I get those contracts coming in each each week or so. So I have new new parcels I'm buying, but I'm also mailing out letters. And I had a great response um, the other day. I sent out 200 in the area out west, and the, these range from 30 up to 50 acres the the area I, I targeted, and I got uh, about a six percent rate came back. And wow. then out of those, I sifted through, and I got about six um, six different people I bought properties with. But one of them had two 40-acre parcels and another acre out in California. And then the other one of them sold me has uh, has one on the river, uh, beautiful uh, mountain views. Uh, is just it's like wow, uh, this is beautiful. I, I might keep that one. I'm not sure. Yeah. And then yeah. Uh, and then a few others were just um, they were out there, but they're you know. 40, 50 acres, and, and, the, and the purchase price was around 3300 each one. So Wow, for 40 acres. What are you going to sell those things for? Uh, I started looking at the values a little bit, and the, the cheaper ones, the ones that are out in the middle of nowhere, probably about seven or eight cash. Okay. And then the nice ones are probably up around 20, ca- uh, 20 cash. So <laughs> that's, a that's, pretty, <laughs> that's a pretty good margin. Yeah, that was it. Was just a brand new uh, area. I was I was thrown out there, and I threw out uh, a two mailing of two hundred people, and I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna give it a try, and uh, just got good response. So it's great, and I'm keeping that secret, Mark, where, where that is. I, of course, I, I don't blame you. <laughs> of course, I mean it's so good. It's just so good. I was who was I talking to? I was talking to a buddy of mine, and and to this day, we just can't find a better business model. We just can't. No, I mean the, there's the no there's no physical inventory, right? So everything's virtual. It's just shuffling paper and making yeah. money. Yeah, and the market is right now. It's it's really good. I mean, it's, it's, it's just got steady. a lot better. It's so steady. Yeah, it's this is. I I don't want it to go up. I don't want it to go down. I just want to stay just like this. It's a it's working perfectly right now. Yeah, so there's really good equilibrium because usually when it when things are off balance. You can have a really easy time. Like the past few years, we could have bought property every single day, yeah. pennies on the dollar. I mean, people are just giving us away, giving property away. But on the other side of it, selling was more of a challenge because nobody had discretionary income. It seemed like to to buy 
the land, investment land. Now, we still sold, but it was just took longer. It was just a little tougher. Would you agree? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's definitely it's definitely changed. A lot of my uh, – I mean, I started right around 2004, 2005 in the market. It just, just turned real bad. And that's when I started this business, and, I, and everything was seller financing, everything. And it right. was cheap, low payments, and I was doing the business, and it was going. Now, you know, it's I'm getting I'm getting more people with cash offers, you know, a lot more. And my and my seller financing prices are coming up as well. I'm not only I'm not doing the, you know, fifty dollars down, fifty dollars a month anymore. I'm, I've upped that a little bit now, so uh, people and, have and more the, money and, to and spend. You, and, yeah, and you know. even seen any resistance in the market by. Raising your prices? No, each. I, in fact, I, I keep. I slow. I'm slowly increasing them, yeah. and it just keeps. And it keeps keeping up with it. So, yeah, it's just everything's going well. That's great. That's great. And how's how's it going with the list building? Oh, that's going good. It's just like I have it. Uh, you know, I get the emails and I send it over to my my uh, CRM manager, and and we just follow up, and it's it's building slowly, building. Uh, right. Um. You know, my squeeze page, I have that out there. That's working. Uh, but, you know, like I said, my, my last week I took a week off and, and it killed me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Everything just came up. Um, I was like, oh, you know, I'll get back into the business. No big deal. Everything's, you know, everything's covered. Then all of a sudden you have a bunch of accepted offers and, you know, you got to catch up with the marketing and, and emails and, and it just, uh, it can get crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it, let's talk about your deal flow. So what, what do you do? Like you get the accepted offer. And then what do you do with it? Because I, I do something I think very different than what you do. I think – Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I get my accepted offer and I have a due diligence sheet that my um, my virtual assistant takes care of. Okay. And she does the initial due diligence. So there's only – there's about 10 steps I have her do. Okay. And uh, then when it comes back to me and everything looks – I'll take a look at it. looks good. Uh, then we'll close on it and then I'll do a little bit more detailed um, – you know, getting GPS coordinates, getting more involved with the due diligence. So I almost do like a two-step process. Okay. And how long does that typically take? It takes my VA probably about half an hour or so, I think. <laughs> okay. I'm so, guessing. Yeah, it's not, it's not like hours and hours. No, no, yeah. no. She does a, about 15 minutes to so half an hour. She she works on that, spits it back to me. I take a look at it, and then we set up closing. And then, um, and I have someone else. Uh, I'll get a deed, copy of the old deed, okay. and uh, make sure the title looks good. And then um, I'll have someone draw up an old deed for the new deed for me. I'll review it, and then I send it out to uh, Notary Pro, and then they they take care of the the closing. That's great. Let me, let me so ask you: do you, yeah. do you ever use an abstractor to help you with your due diligence, or does it have to be a bigger deal? Like where where do you, where does the abstractor come in on that? I haven't used an abstractor. Uh, I do have a few websites for people that I, I said, you know what, if I ever need one, I could call this guy. Right. Uh, the abstractor, at least the ones I've been looking at, cost about 100 to $150 for them to do a, a search and title and everything like that. Right. Uh, so you're paying, you know, for, you could pay a title company, I guess, 150 to 300 some of that range, do the same thing. Um, That's true. You know, you know what we should guess, do is but, find somebody on Fiverr. Like there's there's yeah. attorneys on Fiverr, I bet there's an abstractor on Fiverr that would do this. That'd be a great idea. That'd be yeah, great. I'd, I'd love that. I'd pay someone. To, I'd pay someone to do that. Even if it was fifty bucks. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just and it's not hard. It's just searching the county records. It's, it wouldn't take a more than definitely less than an hour to do a title search and have everything uh, chain of title set up for us. Yeah, yeah. I bet it's out there. And yeah, it, it's so. That's it's a good idea. I'll write that down. Yeah, it's crazy what's going on. As far as the technology and crowdsourcing, and being able to get so much done so cheaply. I mean, we have we remember that last Platinum Mastermind, and Gary yeah. was telling us he's got like four VAs and he's paying them between two and four dollars an hour, and That's they crazy. do everything for him. That's crazy. I mean, he's running this huge business with VAs. It was, right. It was crazy. I'm like, yeah. you're paying that much, and but he but you know, the 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 secret though was. He went through 30 people, though, to find that core group. So yeah. it's, it's tough. I mean, that part's hard work. You know, yeah. you know, it's just like, I mean, nothing's easy, right? I mean, you've got to yeah. go through that pain of finding someone good, training them, letting go. Like, I have a hard time letting go, man. I think that's the hardest part is letting go. I'm, I'm in that 
mode right now of trying, like I said, uh, my, my virtual sense, I have four of them, and I still don't get everything done, and I'm ready to hire more. Okay, so you know, yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. So who are the four virtual assistants, and what, what exactly, how do you delegate to them, and what things? Because we do things a little differently. Yeah, I, um, my, I have one, one girl that does Craigslist, mm -hmm. and um, then I have another one that does my callbacks on my phone. Okay. Uh, so I I get a I'll get four or five calls every couple days or so and and I don't mind calling on the phone. It just seems like it takes me for a while. Like I'll talk on the phone for a while. I'd rather have a v virtual assistant do it. Okay. Yeah. So she does my she she'll make my phone calls. Uh, then I have someone that does my deeds in all my contracts. She writes them up for me before and then I'll. What what software do you use to do that? Is, is that easy CRM? Uh, to do my um, to do uh, assigning projects? No, 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 or, like not, no, no, just like like I use a program called Daylight on the Mac, and it's got the yeah. mail merge. So I just I have you know a special thing. So I've got their legal name, address, oh, oh, phone I see number, and then it plugs in the legal description of the property, all the financing terms for the property, as well as the dates, and it all mail merges into my contracts. But okay. And I could easily outsource all that to somebody, but I don't know if I want, you know, a VA logging in. I mean, I, 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 you know, Daylight Now has a cloud system, but I guess that's what I'll be doing. But I'm really, see, that's, that's one of my big downfalls is I feel like I've got to do the contract. Right. But you don't feel like that. So. No, I, I, I'll, I'll use, um, an Excel sheet. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll type in all the information on that. So who's the buyer, who's the seller, what the terms are, all that. Okay, and then they mail then, merge it, into and then they the mail contracts. merge it into a a document for me. Oh, okay. Into a. I, um, I like my system better though because now I've got all my contacts sitting in one place. All your uh, right. I do save it in dro uh, Dropbox file though. My Excel's. Sheet. Yeah, yeah, but let's say customer X calls two years yeah. from now and they yeah. want more property. Where do you go to find the notes on that deal? Uh, well, in my Dropbox, everything will be all my notes. Everything about that transaction is in a Dropbox file. Okay, so there, there, there's a file for the, for every person in Dropbox. Every single right, every single correct. Every transaction I make is in a file in Dropbox, a certain file with a parcel ID. Oh, that's cool. Everything re related to that parcel ID is in a file. Okay. So I have a purchase. So I have, um, you know, for instance, I'll have it goes from Tamiland, then it goes to. Uh, purchasing property then it goes to the state Colorado then it goes to the county then it goes to a parcel ID Great. and then in that parcel ID folder is everything you can imagine the pictures the note the everything that the VA and that I do is in that Dropbox we all work out of the Dropbox together <laughs> it's fantastic so yeah so it's working it's just that I'm still finding my I want to make it I want to be able to Add more properties to my website faster. Okay, know? so okay, so more properties to your website faster, but your VA doesn't have the the WordPress chops right. to do that. Right, exactly. So um, so yeah, so I have she does the contract. Then I have one girl that does the due diligence and research for me. Okay. Uh, you know, if I want to research new area or something that I want to get into, I'll just say go go look in this area. Give me some notes on it. And okay. then, you know, a couple hours later, I'll get a nice big full page report of the whole area that I'm looking for. I mean, I could do it myself, but I'm just yeah, trying to that, get yeah, out of that. Yeah, that's not efficient. That's not a good use right. of your time. So, so that's where I'm at. And then next, the, the next thing I think I told you about was um, maybe getting someone to answer my emails. Just, um, I mean, I can do it. I'm different than you, Mark. I'm, I'm only spending two hours a day on it. No, you know, I know. It's fantastic. You know, so... No, just trying to make it work so I don't have to be on the computer all day, you know? You know, it's so funny because, if, you know what they say, if you want to get a lot done, give it to a busy person. So you're probably, yes. you're probably you know, 10 times more productive than I am because you're, you you can only spend two hours. So in those That's two it. hours, you got to get it all done. I mean, you're hyper-focused. Right. I think everyone should do that, I, including myself. I should only give myself two hours to work on this business. In fact, yeah, it's, 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 it's funny. <laughs> Because I, I really, uh, like in my calendar, like I set that stuff up. Like I have like, you know, I have like four or five areas of focus. And yeah. within those five areas of focus, 
I'll make to-do lists. And I only give myself so much time to get that done in that day. And then I'm off to the next thing. So I have to be boom, boom, boom. There's no distractions. There's no picking up phones. There's no checking emails. You know what I mean? Because I only have so much time to get it done, just like you. Yeah. Yeah. And I do the same thing. In the morning, I'll write a, uh, I don't have, I have, I write a list of times of how long I have allotted time for it. Same thing. And I mean, this morning, I wanted to list a property and uh, I had an hour. I, I had to do a bunch of stuff with this property, the specific property. Right. And uh, I didn't get it done. It's not listed, but I got a lot of it done. You know, I wanted to continue on it, but I couldn't. I was like, all right, that's it. It's, right, t- it's right. 12 o'clock. I have something else I got to do. How, how so. are you writing your ads? Do you do it or do you have somebody do it? I do it myself still. Um, my mom actually started writing some ads for me. No way. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, and they came out great. She's a she's a, she's an avid reader. She loves reading, and uh, I just figured I'm like, well, she, you know, she, she's always looking for things to do. She 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 invests with me too. Yeah, how, how old is your mom? Uh, she's seventy two. Oh, that's great. So, so she um so she write the ads up, not all of them, but once in a while when I get a new one, a big parcel or something like that, I'll have I'll say, you know, mom, go go spend some time write up an ad. Yeah. And then the the kids mail the letters. My wife all answers the emails. And actually, she said to me the other day, she goes, "Jeff, all right, that's great, but what do you do? <laughs> You're gonna have everyone else doing everything." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm hopefully nothing." Right, right exactly. Like that's that's called being an entrepreneur. Right, right, right. exactly. That you're getting yourself. You're working on the business. You just create right. systems, and everyone else does everything. And then you right. break it. Right. Your job as an entrepreneur is to actually break it. So, yeah. you know, if I own, uh, you know, three pizza chains yeah, and they're going along great, then it's my job to like, okay, how do I, how do I build, you know, build the business to the fourth pizza chain? Right. Something's got to break. Yeah. That's really what we do. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's, and it's, uh, it's challenging though. Yeah, of course. But it's, yeah, I mean, the hard part is, you know, having this self-discipline to, Say to yourself, okay, I know I don't want to do this. I don't want to create this system because it's so much faster and easier and less energy just to do the work myself. It is. Right. Right? Yeah. I mean, it just yep. is. But if you have the self discipline to say, okay, I'll do this one time, I'm going to make my system, and then I'm going to have somebody who will eventually do this better than me. Eventually, right. it's going to take them time. Because when you first start up, no one's going to be able to do it as better than you. I mean, I think I talked about this with Duran, like uh, the concept of comparative advantage, right? Yeah. And uh, and LeBron James. So LeBron James could type 100 words per minute. He can never find a typist as fast as him. But that being said, he shouldn't type his own letters because the time he should be spending is only focused on basketball and making commercials because that's where he makes the majority of his money. Right. Makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the. Uh, I think that's the goal. I mean, but you're but you're you know. doing it. You're you're there. Yeah, yeah, and like I said, I'm just uh, just a couple more couple more VAs, I guess. I don't know. Couple more, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, we should I, I want, we should do for I'd the next to... mastermind like a sharpening of the saw type thing, and just step outside our, our businesses for like a little bit, and kind of analyze our processes, and yeah, have the group say, great. okay, you know what, you might be more efficient if you did this. You might be more efficient if you did that. And let everybody kind of chime in. Yeah, that would be. I think that'd be great. Yeah, because I know I know there's parts in my systems that could definitely improve. We can always improve. Yeah, but you know, it's it's the hard part's finding that time to do that. Right, right. It's at the end of the day. You know, six. I my my schedule's set up for six seven o'clock tonight to work till. Right. And um, not work, but pick the kids up. Um, you know mow the lawn, do the things that I have to do around the house. And uh, and then I figured, I'm like, all right, 7, 8 o'clock, I can spend some time in the business just getting back into doing some more stuff, you know, right? Uh, just because I want to. So Yeah, yeah. So um, it's great. That's great. And it, how's the coaching going? How, how are your coaching clients doing? Oh, they're doing well. Um, let's see. Phil, Phil is doing really good. He's uh, he just bought a bunch of property, yeah. and he's on the he's on the – the sales portion now. I think he's only been in a couple of weeks now, two or three weeks. And Vic is doing fantastic. Uh, you know, he started 
I'm guessing about a month and a half ago, and he has some monster deals already. Vic, Vic is yeah. my hero, by the way. I know. He's he's, he's 75 years old. Yeah. And uh, it's so funny because I really I really thought, well, you know, initially when, when he wanted to do a coaching program, I thought, well, you know, I don't know, Vic. You know, but he he's he's a go-getter. Yeah. I mean, he knew a lot of stuff ahead of time. I mean – you know, I was thinking I had to, I would have had to teach him the uh, like mail merging things like that. He already knew all that. Yeah, uh, smart smart guy. And uh, well, he he's, is a, he's a legitimate genius. Yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he is. Yeah, I felt a little nervous talking to him the first time. I said, "You, I'm, you know, I'm just a firefighter here. You know, <laughs> <Right. laughs> talking to a genius. You know, right? But anyways, yeah, but yeah, no, it's going yeah. well. And then uh, I have another uh, friend of mine in this area that um, I'm coaching. And uh, he just does that as a, as a hobby, and um, I think he's been into it about five, six months, and he, he's bringing in about I don't know thousand, fifteen hundred a month already. Yeah. And he's and he says to me, Jeff, he goes, I, I haven't even begun to focus on this business yet. And he says, I'm bringing this. You know, he bought a bunch of small lots. I think, uh, geez, I think he paid two or three hundred from them, and then uh, sold them for about a thousand or fifteen hundred. And he's just continually been doing that. And for the last six months, but he's, he's like, uh, Jeff, when I focus on it, I'm going to make a lot of money. But, you know, right now I'm just doing it as a hobby. And I said, that's great, my, my, Mike. Yeah, no, it's so great. That's I mean, what, how I started. So. It's, it's crazy how little money you really need to start oh, yeah. doing this. It's not like, I don't know, it's not like housing or, or other real estate investments where you typically you either have to have a lot of capital, great credit, or some source of funds. And when you first start, no one's going to really be like, oh, you're, you're a new investor? Sure, I'll give you $100,000 to invest my money and, right. we'll, and we'll split it. Like That just doesn't happen. Yeah, and I, and I personally, I, I don't want to borrow money from anybody. So for me, I mean, I, I just like using my own money. I built this myself. It's my right. own money. I don't owe anybody anything. The money I make is all mine. I don't have to borrow. There's no stress. No stress. And, uh, no, and so you buy a few parcels. You know, four or five hundred dollars, whatever. You sell them for a couple thousand, and you just start building. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, this, they just take. Eventually, it takes off, especially if you start doing the seller financing notes. Oh um, yeah, I mean, Bob Anderson's. Oh, I think it's like fifteen hundred bucks a month now. And is he really? Yeah, like in three months. Yeah. I mean, I mean, think about it. You know, let let's say you get to let's just take an easy number. You get to ten grand a month, right? So we extrapolate. It takes you know these guys three, four, five months. To get to you know, let's say fifteen hundred bucks, yeah, a month. So what is it going to be at the most? What two years, three years to get to say right. ten ten k a month passive income? That's literally like saving two point four million dollars and taking a four percent interest on a bond and getting that every single month. Right. Wow. How hard yeah, is it, it to way. save yeah. two point four million dollars? That's the beauty of this business. That's right. why I love it so much because it's so hard to save that much money. But if we just do a little bit of work and flip these properties on easy terms, lo and behold, it's like we saved $2.4 million and right. we still have the underlying asset. And when they fall out, we extend that term too. And it's so much fun and so easy to keep building and building. I mean, I know guys who are 40, 50, 60 grand a month. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it doesn't take much. I mean, you, I mean, you do two a week, which is very easy to do. You sell two pieces a week, right? Hundred dollars a piece on terms. That's a, and that's that's two hundred, um, you know, eight hundred a month right away. Right. Uh, selling two parcels a week. Exactly. So fifty weeks, you're at that's it. Oh. At a hundred and three people, at let's say ninety seven bucks a month, you're at ten grand. Right. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't take long, and um, you know, I know I know on my job I've. I've replaced my salary. I'm making more than I would make at the fire station. So, uh, you know, it's nice to have that cushion, you know, right? And uh, just to know that, you know, yeah, I love the, I love being a firefighter. But someday, whenever I want to leave, I can just go. Yeah, because exactly. I've already, I already have everything being my expenses. Everything's being paid. It's just extra money now. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's a little less risk too, Jeff. Just so you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's slightly less risk. I mean, yes. yeah, look, I know you're not saving any, anyone's lives, right? Doing you right. know, and but you're definitely helping people, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. are helping people. You're right. Yeah, yeah. 
But, but still, yeah, you're helping everyone in the whole chain. You're getting you're getting the property. You're helping them because they're getting rid of something they don't want. They need some cash. You know, you're right. taking it off their shoulders. And then you're helping someone when they when they buy it from you because they always want a piece of land, you know, or, or whatever they want to do with it. Build a vacation home. You're right. helping yourself because you're making money. Yeah, so, I mean, exactly. it's, it's, it's a it's a happy business. It's a happy business, and it's the <laughs> ultimate asset. It's the only thing that lasts. Land lasts longer than styrofoam, for crying out loud. <laughs> I mean, it's the only thing that lasts. You buy a house, you got to replace the roof. I mean, eventually that house becomes dilapidated, and you got to tear it down. You know, in Japan. Houses are like disposable. Like people keep houses like 15 years and they tear them down and build another one. Oh, really? It's killing their market, by the way. Yeah. It's killing I'm it. Sure. Their, their, their housing is a, is a total mess. But um, that's not here or there. I digress. Yeah. But, uh, well, but you know what? I'm, I'm so glad that you're, uh, you're still doing this and you're enjoying it and you're loving it. I thought once we got, once we got you into land coaching, you'd be like, oh, I just want to coach. But you're yeah. still you're still working on the business. I yeah I do yeah I like doing both you know being in the business and, and being able to teach it and and um you know helping again helping others. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Coaching is helping you know so uh, no I, I, yeah. I I'll do the I think I'll do this forever I, I really will I I think uh, my plan is retirement and, and you got to do something to retirement at some some point I at least I think so and yeah. um, this is what I'm going to continue to do so. So well, I mean, I mean me. Vic is an inspiration to all of us. I mean, when I was right. seventy-five, I'd still love to be hustling and doing this business. Oh, definitely, and and um, because it's fun. Yeah, and and I, I honestly, I I would, I, if I had time right now, I you know my family and everything's here. Right. I would definitely be flying out to all these areas that I'm buying into and really get it, digging my feet into the ground and taking pictures and finding more about the area because I think you get more, definitely more. More value to your customers, and you get more money for the properties too. If you oh, actually yeah. know them, you know, a hundred percent. You know, you're out there and looking at it, and and uh, meeting people. I think uh, I'd love to do that. You know, but right now you can't. Yeah, but can't. You, you know, what you could do though, is you could do uh, like a FaceTime or a Skype with your local agent and have them go stomp on the ground. Right, and you're talking <laughs> to them at the same time, and they're they're describing to you and they're showing you everything and they're saying look you know I, I took this road and I'm going here it would literally save you so much money and so much time but feel like you're really there yeah that's true yeah I guess you could I could have you know I do have photographers so I could tell them uh, why don't you Skype me when you get to the spot and when we'll do a conference and I'll and I'll record it yeah yeah exactly I mean yeah. it, may, it may not be great uh, you know because some of those areas don't have great service like LTE, but typically right. they'll have 3G. I mean, I guess Edge would be really terrible if somebody didn't have any, you know, even 3G out there. But still, it'd be close enough. They're taking pictures for you. They're talking to you about the land and what the road was like. You know, you're getting mileage, how far you are from town, what services there are. I mean, really, your agent could give you the whole story without. I mean, look, nothing's going to. Uh, replace you stomping on that property, but that's pretty close, and and leveraging your time. Yeah. So I don't know, but anyways, we're at that point. I love putting everyone on the spot, especially you, Jeff. All right. Well, I, I was prepared, Mark. You prepared? Duran <laughs> uh, was prepared last week. All right. What's no, your? No, I had. I know. You know. I thought. You know. It's funny. I almost wasn't. About five minutes ago, I was kind of getting ready. And I was like, "Oh, geez, I need to get a, I need to get something." Wait, wait, wait but, a second! Uh, you're podcasting with me, and you're surfing the net at the same time. <laughs> no, 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 no! I'm sorry. Five minutes before we started. Oh, five minutes before we started. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, how? That's amazing focus. How are you doing no, that? No, I couldn't do that. Are you kidding yeah. me? No way. Yeah, I, I can barely talk and think at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's your tip of the week? I have a cool website. Uh, it is related a little bit to uh, land because there's some some cool apps on there. It's called uh, I don't know if you ever heard of it. Product Product Hunt. Have you heard that? No, I've never heard of it. All right, it's really cool. It's ProductHunt.com. P R O D U C T H U N T dot com, and it's brand new products and apps and websites that are out instantly and they're reviewed. And um, there's all kinds of neat websites that show up every day 
And this kind of keeps track of all these new websites that pop up. No kid, This is so cool. This, I know. I, I'll tell I, you what. This is a great tip. And, I'm uh, going to, I, don't, uh, I don't know how I fell on it, but um, it has everything from, you know, office office work stuff to music to you name it. It's on here. And it's just brand new websites that pop up and have a product or, the, or an app for phone. It'll it'll show up there. I'm, I'm going to bookmark this. For sure. This is great. And take a look at it. Producthunt.com. Man, is that good. All right, so that's a great tip. My tip of the week. What is my tip of the week going to be? I don't even know. I haven't really thought about it until just now. Um, Jeff, can I take your tip? All right, so so Jeff just I just lost Jeff. There we go. I'm back. Oh, Mark. Now you're back. Okay. Uh, what was that? I'm, I want to. Do you care if I take your tip of the week? Um, do I? Your your VA tip? No oh, task bullet. No, I don't care. Yeah. I don't mind. All right. So this is really Jeff. So he's doing two this week, but I was busy, so that's my excuse. <laughs> so there's no excuse, but uh, taskbullet.com. I'm going to go there right now. T A S K, like I have a task for you. And bullet, like I just shot a bullet out of a gun, is a virtual assistant services site. So it's pretty cool. Live the four hour work week, hire a virtual assistant for as low as four ninety five an hour. Jeff, what are the advantages of this service? Uh, the advantages is that you don't have to go searching for anybody. So I, I send my manager that they give you a manager. And you say to your manager, I need someone to post Craigslist listings for me twice a week. And he finds a professional. And he'll say, Jeff, I'll get back to you to, uh, by the end of the day. And um, I'll set someone up for you. And then we start working together. And, and I've only used this service for about a month now. And so far, I've hired two VAs. And they've both been great. And uh, so, it, so it reduces the time you have to look for somebody. You don't really have to interview. They give you someone. You know who would love this is Steven because he's oh, been really? having the hardest time with VAs. Steven, if you're listening to this, you know who you are in, uh, in Portland. <laughs> yeah, Check out yeah. taskbullet.com because, you know, he, you know, he doesn't have time to deal with the VAs. Oh, he's going to love this then. He's going to yeah. love this. Um, this is fantastic. By the way, you know what we didn't mention? Uh, rest in peace, Robin Williams. I heard. Is that crazy? That's unbelievable. I don't understand it. I, I still well, can't comprehend it. it. It's because it's incomprehensible. Literally, when when someone is in uh, is in such a depressed state, which obviously goes away. So when you when you're when it's so bad that you have to have a permanent solution for a temporary problem. It's literally impossible for the intellect to understand. It's un. It's there's not a human being on earth where I would say, yeah, they'd be better off dead than alive. Like, really? Right. Come on. Right. I mean, there's evil people, you could say. <laughs> It'd probably be better for humanity right. if they're dead than, or dead than alive. But, but typically, you know, from a philosophical basis, like, life is pretty good. Like, and this guy's life was extraordinary. Yeah. And Four, four yeah. movies coming out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, how much – I mean, it's just – it's it's crazy. So, you know, rest in peace, Robin Williams. And if you're uh, if you're a severely depressed human being, get help because it will get better. I don't even know why I'm saying that. I think yeah, I think people who listen to the podcast already know this, but yeah, that's just uh, doesn't make sense. It's crazy. So, Jeff, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule, as always, to. Uh, be on the podcast. It's been a while, man. So we have to yeah. come, come back uh, a little sooner here. That sounds great, Mark. Thanks for having me. And listen, if you want to acquire some wholesale land from one of the greatest land investors in the Northeast, <laughs> check out TammyLand.com. T-A-M-M or one M? It's T-A-M-E-E. -E. T-A-M-E-E. -E. I'll have a link to it. T-A-M-E-E -E, land.com. And look. 
if Jeff's prices are just too high, where he doesn't have any anything you want, go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. Check out my site. Buy some wholesale land from there. Give us some love. Go on iTunes. Rate us. It really helps. Leave us a comment. Uh, we would really appreciate it. And, of course, always go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And, of course, get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. Jeff, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right, buddy. Thanks again. Uh, I really appreciate you. And uh, you're just crushing it, man. I couldn't be more proud. All right. You're Thank you, doing, Mike. You're doing great. And uh, let's let's podcast uh, sooner than later. That sound, sounds great. All right. Thanks, Jeff. And right, uh, we'll I want to thank all the listeners. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to, uh, to listen to us and learn more about land investing. So we'll see everybody next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.